Hello and welcome to a millinery hat making video. My name is Ilona, I'm a milliner based in London and today I'm restoring my vintage and antique hat blocks. I've got some brims, berets and puzzle blocks as well as a very special spa tree shape. These all require slightly different approaches, tools and techniques, so let's get the woodworking tools out and get started. I want to give you some background on these blocks as I think it's important to keep the history and provenance of these objects out in the open. All of these blocks except for the puzzle block were purchased from Sarah Marshall who runs the John Boyd hat shop in London. Some of these blocks are very very old indeed and have been used a lot, some to the extent that they are completely broken. But they are all still salvageable and have many more years of service left in them. In case you don't know, hat block making is an endangered craft and millinery itself is at risk. So please help me keep it alive by clicking the like button, subscribing to my channel and sharing this video with your friends. The more people we can get interested in hat making practices, the better. The way I have decided to approach these restorations is by compiling a set of steps to follow for each block. Here they all are. Not every step will be necessary for each block and where that is the case I will just skip it. First off, I need to evaluate the damage. I estimate this brim block dates back to the late 40s. It's a bonnet style that is very flattering and opens up the face of the wearer. It's got some staining, some dents, but worst of all, cracks. I paid £70 for this one and I'm pretty confident it will be an easy fix. Second, I'm calling this one a rounded saucer brim. It's got some pins stuck in it and it will need some sanding and cleaning. But what really sticks out is the remains of a head size collar that someone else has tried to remove but clearly gave up halfway through. I'll have to get a set of chisels to try and finish what the previous owner started. I paid £45 for this one and once it's restored I'm really looking forward to blocking a brim that folds in under itself. Up next is this mini ring brim block. This is the one in the worst state and the price I paid for it reflects that. It was only £25. Hopefully it's still flexible enough to clamp it back together using wood glue and filler. This is the one I'm most worried about not working out. I'm calling this next one a pork pie topper. It's not really a pork pie crown shape, but I couldn't think of a better name. This one is really well used and once again the price reflects that at £25. It's got cracks, stiffener residue and a lot of sharp pins poking out. This one will probably be the easiest to restore and once that's done I am very intrigued at how a hat will turn out from it. I'm imagining a bright red felt with stripy black and white ribbons. This next one is so beautiful and has come to me with signs of previous repairs. I paid £130 for this shape which I am calling a turban crown. I think I can improve all the existing repairs and with some conditioning oil it will look as good as new. Moving on to the next shape, I'm calling this a helmet crown and it cost me £80. This is in very good condition already, it just needs some cleaning up. This is another one of those that I'm really interested in how a blocked hat will come out from it. I just can't visualise how this will look on my head. A giant berry block. I paid £80 for this one. It needs sanding and cleaning and like many used blocks it has pins sticking out which will need to be taken off. I'm surprised that a shape like this isn't a puzzle block. I'm a little worried that a hat blocked on this will be impossible to take off. This penultimate block was probably made by John Boyd himself out of Spartry. I was about to pay Sarah for all the previous blocks but she reached into a box and took out this Spartry berry. We both agreed that this shape would be very flattering on me so I had to go home with it. I paid £5, it's such a bargain. Unfortunately it's very mouldy and has a dent so I will need to treat it to kill any mould spores and then to fill the dent. 
I've just mentioned I've got a spa tree hat block that is in need of a slightly different type of restoration to wooden hat blocks, but I've also got a special case wooden hat block over here, and it's a special case because it potentially had woodworm. Now, to treat woodworm, one uses something that is this, which I actually haven't used because I was a bit scared of all the chemicals, but I got it anyway. But to check if there was woodworm in this, this hat block has been quarantined, and we all know about quarantine, for a good year now, and the way to check if there was woodworm is to just lift it up and see if there's any sawdust in the box. I think that looks pretty clean, so hopefully there's no woodworm and I don't need to use the harsh chemicals, but just so you know, this is what woodworm would have looked like. It clearly had woodworm before, but it's been filled in. So luckily I can just take this out of quarantine and restore it just like all the other hat blocks. This one is an eBay find and at £110, I think I overpaid for it. It wasn't being sold by a milliner and I think the seller didn't care about the item and wanted to make as much money as possible from it. Once it's restored and I have blocked on it, I might put it back into quarantine and store it away from all the other hat blocks, just in case. I've had to go on a shopping trip to my local hardware store and I've bought lots of extra tools, some steel wool. If I don't use it on the hat blocks, at least it will come in useful in the kitchen. A shawl shaped plane with a spare blade. Once again, I think that some of the hat blocks need a little bit of wood shorn off, and I guess this is going to be a bit like a cheese grater, but for wood. A wood chisel set. I've never used chisels before. I'm a little bit worried about it because obviously using tools like this can be very dangerous, but hopefully I will get my head around how to use them in a controlled manner. A sanding block, obviously, for wrapping sandpaper around. Now sandpaper is something I already had lying around, so I've got the sanding block made out of cork and a P80 grit sandpaper and a file set. This is going to come in very useful on a very specific block. Once I've chiseled away at things, I might potentially need some wood filler to fill in the blocks. Most of the wood is dark, so I got a dark colored wood filler and also a light colored wood filler just in case the dark is too dark and maybe if the light is too light, I could mix the two together and get a good color. And then once I've done all of that, the wooden blocks, I've got some chopping board mineral oil along with some rags to apply it with. Now, there's differing opinions on whether one should oil hat blocks or not. Rachel from the YouTube channel Labricaloose says that she does oil her hat blocks at the university that she teaches at. However, some hat block producers on their website about how to care for blocks and things like that say there's no need to oil hat blocks, but if you're buying a new hat block, the wood is going to be well conditioned and fresh, but some of these hat blocks are, I think, dating back to at least the 40s, if not earlier. So I think they do need a little bit of oil just to bring them back to life and condition them a little bit. The other thing that is slightly controversial when it comes to hat block restoration is whether to varnish the blocks or not. I've got here an outdoor yacht varnish that is gloss along with an appropriate paintbrush to apply it with. First I thought that I would be varnishing the blocks, however, I'm not going to be varnishing any of the wooden hat blocks. And that's because when you're blocking something, steam and moisture touches the wood, the wood will expand and then as the hat block dries, when it's not in use, the wood will contract. It has to have that movement in the wood if you don't want it to crack. If I cover it in varnish, that completely seals the entire hat block and then the wood cannot breathe and so it won't be able to expand and contract. As I don't know what the right way to go about this is, I'm just going to assume that the antique hat blocks that aren't varnished don't need any extra varnish. The one thing that I will be varnishing is the Spartary hat block that I have here. Safety warning. Working with tools can be dangerous. I am taking all the recommended safety precautions to protect myself. 
If you do not know how to work with tools, please consult your local woodworking professionals and they will be able to help you. You are responsible for your own safety. Step 1 is to remove any debris and erroneous pins. I am using a combination of pliers, tweezers and chisels to complete this task. It is so satisfying to pry out these old pins. Sometimes there will be hidden pins missing their pin heads. These will be sharp, so I am using my fingers to gently feel around the block and if I come across any I will take them out. If I can't get them out, the best thing to do is to hammer them back in deeper into the wood. Step 2 is wood glue. I have two blocks requiring this treatment, the wavy brim and the completely split ring brim. On the wavy brim I am going to apply some wood glue using a paintbrush and getting it right into the crevices. Wood glue works by seeping into the wood and forming a strong bond under pressure, so I am going to use some G clamps to hold it all together for at least 24 hours while it dries. The more time I spend looking at these hat blocks close up and in great detail, the more I start noticing interesting marks about the ways in which these hat blocks have been used. For example, on this wavy brim, there's a line that has been marked on, on the inside over here. In some kind of pencil, in fact there's two lines, there's some more on the top edge over here and what this would have been is a cutting line, a marked line for specific hat designs that potentially Mr Boyd would have come up with and marked the lines on the block where he wants to cut the material. So you've got a brim that's very very slim over here and then you've got a brim that doesn't have the back at all over here because the line is going out here. This one here that I've been hacking away at to get the collar off, there's another mark that's drawn around, oh you can see it very well there reflecting the light, here it is. So uh, again, a shortening of the brim and this is something that I get very excited about because I am a firm believer of you have a block but you use the block as a tool, it's not something that's dictating you, the block isn't a set of instructions that you must follow, the block is a tool that you use in whatever way you want to use it, so clearly Mr Boyd decided that this block is great but for a particular design he wanted to have the brim a little bit shorter and I do that on some of my blocks and I encourage you to try that on some of your blocks as well. For the smaller ring brim, it has got old wood glue residue along the cracked join, so before re-gluing it I am using a metal file to get as much of the old stuff off as possible. To hold it in place I've had to use a table vise. I've been trying for a while now to get that very broken block to close together using some clamps. The trouble is, is that wood is so dry that it's wanting to snap back open at any point and I'm actually worried that that block might be a lost cause. If I manage to fix it enough to last for one blocking, I might be able to block some foss shape over the top of it to at least take a copy of that block. This wavy brim has now been drying for several days, it's time to take the clamps off and see if the glue has worked. Now that I've got the clamps off of this one, I've been sitting around and thinking about why this line that I was talking about earlier is drawn on the inside of the block and not on the outside. It turns out, I think I figured it out, all this time I thought this was like a, a brim like this, like a kind of uh, a bonnet sun hat brim, but actually I think this is one of those really stunning 1940s brims that go, hang on, I've confused myself again, that go like this, like a, like a really big open bonnet brim, so not, um, so you would block on this underside rather than on the top and then wear it like this, <laughs> which I guess makes makes a lot more sense. I have been struggling with this block 
over here. You can see I've hacked away at it a little bit over here doing some experimenting with how to get this edge off. It needs to come off because it's very, very uneven. First I tried using the tiny little hacksaw over here and that hardly made a dent in it. So then I went into my tool cupboard and I found this, which is something that in the past I've used to saw off Christmas tree branches. And then I've also got one of these saws, just a standard saw that usually I use to saw off the bottom of a Christmas tree. None of these were fast enough for my liking to get this off. So what you can see over here, that was me using the chisels. So I finally figured out how to use the chisels. I had to go ahead and order one of these. I think this is called a table vise. It's quite a, quite a handy thing really, it's also very heavy. Once I got the block into position using the table vise, I got to chiseling away. This made me rather nostalgic about summers spent with my granddad who was always working on something around the house. He taught me how to use a drill and put up a shelf when I was nine years old and I am forever grateful for the skills that he taught me. Even though I am quite competent with tools, sometimes I just don't have enough strength. I am working on this, but in the meantime I had to call the husband in to help with removing this stuck nail. This next step I am labelling 3A because it links to the previous chiselling. I am using the sure shape plane, also known in my head as the wood cheese grater. This will further even out the surface. Whilst doing this restoration work I researched Mr John Boyd a little bit and it turns out he did his apprenticeship with Aggie Tarrup. I am such a big fan of Aggie Tarrup's hats and I've even got his book of tutorials. I can definitely see a thread of continuity between Mr Boyd and Aggie Tarrup's designs and they are both such iconic milliners. I am going to make the shapes from these blocks available to you all. From December 2022 you will be able to purchase a blocked shape that you can trim and turn into a proper hat yourself. Make sure you are following me on Instagram to not miss the launch. And of course my Patreons will get a 10% discount on everything in my shop. This isn't the only time I will be sanding throughout these steps. I'm calling this the preliminary sanding, during which I am taking off the top layers of dirt. On some blocks this will reveal more hidden broken pins, while on others, such as the giant beret, the sanding starts taking off layers of what looks like brown paper mache. I am not sure why this whole block turned out to be covered in layers of brown paper, but to get it all off, I am using a wet sanding method using damp steel wool and rags. I am glad I took the time to do this, as it has revealed that this berry block is drying out and full of little cracks which I will have to tend to later. On the pork pie topper, I decided to use some of the metal files to get into the grooves. They really needed some smoothing out. This exposed some chipping and I will have to use some wood filler to build up and reinforce the chipped edges. I've been chiseling away for some time now at the inside edge of this, I'm calling it a turban style hat block, and I've discovered under the old wood filler there's a section here that is completely covered in staples. And what this is, is a very clever fix for a hat block that has too many pinholes on the inside, as you can see here. And the fix is this, you get a piece of rope, or electrical wire, or something like that, and you position it along the inside edge of the crown block, and then you use a staple gun to staple it in place and that gives you something new to pin into because the wood is too damaged. Before adding in all of the filler to cover up the rough surface of the rounded crown block, I should add a little bit of this stuff, which is fiberglass adhesive scrim tape. Usually this is used on plaster walls to cover joins, but because I had this big hole, I can cut some of this tape off, cut it to size, and then stick it down onto the wooden block. I can use some glue if I need to, 
and then put filler on top of that and the hole will magically disappear. After the preliminary sanding, it's time to fill some dents and cracks. I'm using a dark coloured wood filler to match the colour of the wood. Lighter colours of wood fillers tend to have an unsightly orange tinge. Pretty much every block needs some degree of filling. When using filler, it is useful to have a container of water nearby and to use a spatula. Larger dents will need several layers and you must leave it to dry in between each application. The rounded saucer brim needed three layers to make it an even surface. I am slightly worried about the wood filler on the turban crown as I don't know if I will be able to pin into it to get the folds into the felt. There are clever ways to block on a shape like this that don't require pins and I will be sure to try them out once this block is ready for use. As for the two brim blocks, the filler will help disguise the wood glue join and also give it some extra reinforcement. Once the wood filler is dry, it needs to be sanded down to be smooth. This is the final sand. Don't forget to wipe any sanding dust off the blocks using a damp cloth. These blocks are now almost ready. If I was a woodworking channel, this is where I'd say, use some wood oil to bring out the natural beauty of the grain in the wood. However, I'm not using any fancy wood oil, just some chopping board mineral oil from Ikea. To apply it, I'm using an old rag. Step 9 is only necessary on puzzle blocks. I am using a little bit of paraffin wax on the joining slots. This is to help with the friction when taking this block apart. Paraffin wax can be used on old wooden drawers to make them slide out better and I use it on my leather sole dance shoes to make them super slippery, so I figured it would work here for the same purpose too. We've gone through all the wooden blocks and not looked at the spa tree berry yet, so let's do that now. First off, treat the mould. I have quite a severe dust and mould allergy, so I am being super careful and wearing a face mask for this step. I am using a 3% hydrogen peroxide spray which should kill any mould spores. Once the block is sprayed, I'm going to leave it out in the bright sun, as the UV will also help with getting rid of the mould spores. I did this treatment several times over a couple of days spraying the block inside and out. Due to the mould, it has a dent in the top, and I'm going to use some white polyfiller with a spatula to build up the layers and bring back that lovely curve. It took three layers, and once it's dry, it can be sanded. The last step is to use some yacht varnish for extra reinforcement. Ideally, I would have used a substance called Spartalac, but this doesn't exist anymore. Spartalac was used as a stiffener for studio-made spa tree hat blocks. When I asked Sarah about this, she said that Mr. Boyd started using yacht varnish as a replacement for Spartalac when it was no longer available. So this is exactly what I am doing. This stuff is really smelly, so make sure to use it in a well-ventilated space and follow all the safety guidance written on the tin. And here are the before and afters. I have immensely enjoyed expanding my skill set into woodworking and adding to my block collection at the same time. I'd like to say a special thank you to all of you watching, liking and subscribing, as it is you who make these videos possible. I'd like to know which of these blocks was your favourite, so leave me a comment down below. I am planning a live stream next week where I will be blocking and unblocking live, and everyone's most favourite block is the one I will be demonstrating first. I'd like to end with another massive thank you to my Patreons and all of you leaving me tips on Ko-fi. Your support helps fund the technology and filming that goes into making these videos. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.